U.S. President Joe Manchin, <laughs> he might as well be, will not support climate spending as part of a reconciliation package, likely dooming any major climate legislation before the 2022 midterms. A Democrat briefed on the conversation confirmed to The Hill Thursday night. The West Virginia Democrat told Democratic leaders on Thursday that he was unwilling to support a spending package with either climate provisions or a new tax increase on corporations or wealthy individuals. Manchin said last December that he would not back the $2 trillion Build Back Better package, who could forget, which included major climate provisions seemingly killing its chances in the 50-50 Senate. Since then, Manchin has returned to the negotiating table with both Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and a bipartisan group of senators. I have this stupid pop-up that keeps getting in my way as I'm trying to read this. Manchin had previously expressed doubt about new spending Wednesday following the report that inflation surged 9.1% over the last year, the highest annual rate since 1981. Following the release of the report, the centrist senator suggested he was only sold in the proposal to reduce prescription drug prices. We know that we can, we know what we can pass is basically the drug pricing, okay, on Medicare, Manchin told reporters Wednesday. Is there any more we can do? I don't know, but I am very, very cautious. Ah, oh, this man is just... The reported stalemate comes less than four months ahead of the 2022 midterms. Should Democrats lose their slim majority in one or both houses of Congress, Manchin's announcement would likely close the door on any new spending, any new climate spending for the remainder of Biden's term. Progressives and environmental activists have faulted what they have said is Biden's overly cautious approach to climate issues and said it risks dampening voter, voter enthusiasm among many of the voters who elected him in 2020. The Hill has reached out to Manchin and Schumer's office for comments, as well as the Senate Energy and Public Works Committee, which Manchin chairs. So this is one of those stories where I could sit here and I could talk about how Manchin's in bed with fossil fuel companies and, you know, the Democrats have the same person that ruins everything. But, you know, I, I think we're, we're all kind of tired of it at this point. Um, in a way, I'm kind of glad he's doing this because I've realized that with him, it's, it's sort of like a broken record where you've got a guy who, even if we're just sticking to Biden era stuff, right, refuses to go for Build Back Better, even after multiple attempts to bring it to his standards and kills the legislation because of that. A guy who in the past voted for, you know, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, this is obviously in the Trump era, but just as an example. And it really feels like he has this, this plot armor. And I'm hoping that maybe if the Democrats keep not being able to pass anything because of him or because of his refusal to support anything his president puts in front of him, um, maybe the Republicans can win both the House and Senate and then we can see for a good reason of why there are certain Democrats that are not worth electing, like Manchin. Um, maybe we need to see that even when you think you have a majority, you know, with the 50-50 and then Harris has the 51st vote to break ties, you don't, you don't really, because blindly supporting people due to them having a D by their name is not a strategy that I think is sustainable for governing. I remember the 2018 midterms, vote blue no matter who. We're going to have a blue wave. And this is the same ideology that got Manchin. This was his second term in the Senate. And it's something that people just have to recognize as not being fruitful. That These people in West Virginia voted for a Democrat who votes against his party all the time on very important issues. And... I hope that if if the, if he refuses to go along with this and the Democrats lose the House and the Senate or they perform very poorly in the midterms, people will re recognize, yeah, just stop voting for someone based off of who their party is. I mean, what, what does it tell you when the Democrats are in such bad shape that they have a majority 
where it's literally half and half, where the vice president has to come out to break up votes, where if, if one of them says, I will not do this, they're screwed. And this is supposed to be a party that has a strong mandate and is going to govern. And uh, you've got that weak president that doesn't sit here or do anything and even refers to the person that's killing his tenure and the things he wants to do as a friend. It's ridiculous. And that's why I said that I'm, I'm glad that Manchin's doing this. I hope this assists people with recognizing that voting for Democrats um, just because of what's, what's by their name leads to a crappy government like the one we have now where you you get you get more strong opposition from members of your own party than from the actual opposition party and then that person thinks he can get away with it and he know and he's correct to believe that because you have weak heads of state um and a and a, a very weak president a very weak democratic uh leadership so you know Schumer and Durbin and all the rest of them, they're, 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 they're not going to hold Manson's feet to the fire. And it's, it's really pathetic, but you know, we're, we're used to them being, uh, ineffectual. I mean, look at the last two years, for example.